you. Can you introduce yourself uh, in a few words just to begin, please? Yes, of course. My name is Stephanie. I am from Mexico and I'm working in the screen information mission in Mexico. And um, I am the external uh, relationship officer. So how did you come to work uh, in the humanitarian sector or for TSF? Actually, it was like a recommendation from a friend, Abril, and I met her really random, <laughs> like walking in the in the park. That that was really amazing. I think it was like um, something that has that was meant to be. And I I am I studied international relationships, so the job was just precisely what what was I looking for in that moment. When was this? Uh, one year and a half ago. How did you decide to become a humanitarian aid worker? Was there a moment, something that made a click? <laughs> I have I have always been like kind of involved in actions that help others. It's not I don't know how much is precisely considered humanitarian aid, but um, I always try to, for example, in the voluntaries and something like that, like working in the school, uh, I have always been involved in that. And in other ONGs that no precisely work directly with humanitarian aid work, were more related to um, to, sub, uh, to the environment, to protect the environment. Um, I used to work in an um, organization that uh, bent the the use of uh, plastic in a uh, state and it was really interesting because I was working in the application of the law and I think that some way helped in the humanitarian sector. Um, and why I decided, I think that in general we have a uh, few time, like our, our life is, is short, right? So it's really important to where do you uh, give your time? So if you are doing something uh, all the all the days for eight hours of the day, of the day <laughs> like the job, the main job, uh, so I think it should be something that really matters, something that really give you uh, a sense of contribution. And that's why I think that uh, Working in humanitarian humanitarian aid is something that, for me, gives me that that sense that I'm doing something with my time that doesn't only uh, benefits me and also benefits others. Okay, great, thank you. That's that's very well said. Um, so, your work uh, that you do uh, is inside in the context of a project. Uh, could you? In a few sentences, in, explain the context of the project that you're working on. What needs does your mission answer? Yes, we're working on a mission in Mexico, Colombia and Guatemala that uh, we uh, working in a context of migration, uh, usually South America, uh, people that is trying to find a better place to live for several reasons, for example, war or um, violence, mostly violence. Um, yeah, like inequality and also uh, environment environment situation that doesn't allow them to, to live, uh, still living in the place they uh, born and they grew up. Uh, so they decide to uh, travel and go to the United States mostly because they have this American dream that they believe that maybe in that place they could have a better life. And because obviously in, in past um, experience of uh, maybe relatives or something, they uh, could do it, so they have like a this, this reference. But this situation has been um, growing through the time and there is like tons of people traveling all the days uh, looking for a better life that is really, really um, justified. Um, 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 it's, it's like a need 
to, to have place safety to live, you, you know? So uh, in this context, uh, they travel around uh, shelters or point of support uh, around these district countries where we are working. And what we do, because in these places uh, or usually in this um, journey, they have information that something sometimes is just gossip and is is information that is not um, well fundamented. So what we try to do is provide to them through screens that are in the shelters or in this point of support that uh, information that is is trustworthy that is um, that is useful for them like maps or like what services does the shelters has in the, in the shelter that they are. For example, legal services or uh, medical services or psychological services. And also um, we share, uh, right now we are working on sharing um, mental health information that help them because this, they are in a context that is really stressful for them. So they have, like trying to give them all the tools that could be useful for make their travel more uh, human. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Um, more specifically, could you explain on a daily basis or in general what you do as you and your job? Of course. Uh, <clears throat> I am the main contact uh, principal with shelters. And right now, um, well, this year I've started to work in also with our allies, like UNICEF, um, um, uh, International Red Cross, and uh, another allies that they uh, want us to share their content, or we contact them for share their content that we um, we have any um, contact with their content like through YouTube or some some other tool. And we thought that that um, information is valuable and we can share it with, with this uh, population and could be useful for them. So I'm doing like the, um, I'm like the main, the main uh, focal point for them. And I'm right now working with the collaboration agreement because we have like since uh, 2018 that we started to work this mission, we have a relationship with, for example, uh, main, uh, main organization, international organizations that were also with migrants, but we didn't like formalize these uh, relationships. So right now I'm working to formalize this relationship with a collaboration agreement with them about the exchange of content between us. Yeah. Uh, with the shelter managers, I am the main contact to uh, follow up the project to see if the screens are working correctly, to see if, um, if the information provided is accurate, if the, there is uh, any urgent ma matter that we should uh, be aware of and share it with the rest of the shelters. And uh, in main... Uh, like in, in moments that are really um, like precisely, like for example, right now the removal of the uh, 42 title in United States, that is, is something really specific. Most people thought that maybe uh, with the removal will be, will be easier to cross the border, but it's not. So it's something that we have to let them know so they be aware and prepare of what is happening if, you, if they decided, for example, to leave the place where they were making a legal process to be a refugee. So sometimes they, for example, have this news that is uh, that they think could be better for their for them if they move to the border while they are doing already a legal tramit in the place that they are in, for example, if they are in the middle of the country in Mexico but the border, they are not in the border, but they are working a tramit there. If they leave that state and they move to the border, the tramit that they had been working already is lost. So it's mm -hmm. something really important that, that uh, for example, the shelters told me that they do and that we should inform to them that they don't do that because it's like, it's unnecessary and better get 
more with more um, tools or earn information besides do that and general context like uh, for example right now there is been like a lot of robbery or extortion or stuff like that around this shelter or this part of the city so they shouldn't go there and so that that information or everything that the shelters need from our side i am the main contact to them so you described what you did uh, in your job can you explain to me maybe one aspect that you really love uh, in your job my team work is great i love them <laughs> um <laughs> i in my job uh, i like that uh, kind of the same that I was telling before, like that I'm giving my time to something greater than me, that um, mm. that I'm contributing to something that is helping another person, that I'm giving my, my that my job is helping others. For me, it's, it's, it's sense of, of, yeah, contribution, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's giving me a reason to wake up and say, okay, I have to do my job. Uh, really great because this will help them to be more informed and it's like something that maybe doesn't sound that doesn't doesn't sound that amazing like uh, yes I, but at the same time it's something that no one else is doing and then is one of the things that is more help that give more help to them be really have all the information that they need to make the right decisions for their life and that that is really valuable i think that is really mm, yeah that is, is is really important that i think that we can be helping a lot of people around these countries and and sharing something that they they really need in that moment that could give them or bring them peace or at least less stress in their process. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that, you know, poses a challenge for you or is a bit harder every day or is, you know, maybe a negative part of your job? Um, Since we are working, like, there is uh, 80 night shelters with, we are working on, some of them 60s with IOM, but um, I think sometimes it could be easier if for solve technical problems to be present there, but it's difficult, that part. So that could be easier because sometimes the people, the, the shelter managers are not, uh, well, are not good in technical stuff and like that. That is not that complicated, but at the same time, they, for example, it's like, I'm calling to see sometimes like, hey, your screen is not working right now. Can you check it and like that? And they're like, yeah, of course. Oh, I have to leave you. There is like a full bus that of, of 30 people that just arrived. And I was like, okay, fine. Yeah, go ahead. And. <laughs> this can can wait, you know. Uh, so yeah, that that could be easier. Um, where else? Um, maybe. Uh, I th I think mostly the technical part is like the one that that uh, something is is challenging, because also I'm not a, te a technician, but I <laughs> I, I learn <laughs> through through this year how to solve that kind of problems. And right now I'm an expert on the screen. <laughs> Is it maybe hard to see suffering or how do you handle that? Uh, because you work in the closer relations with, you know, people that are in forced displacement and trying mm -hmm. to find a better life and often have suffered quite a lot. Uh, is this something that affects you? How do you live it? frustrated that we can can do more but at the same time i'm aware that what we are doing is what we have to do you know like it's kind of mm -hmm. enough in that part and we cannot do everything and that's why there is another another organization and in 
in collectivity. Also, um, yeah, here, like when we go to visit the shelters and hear all the stuff that they had to uh, go through in their journey and the people that they lost and the experience that they have, like, and they like let go all their yeah, related like in the in the in the place where they grow up from what i understand it's always like you can't help everyone and it's hard to accept that fact kind of yes yeah, a little yeah. bit frustrating yeah, yeah. because we have okay. like a a main line where we are working on and we cannot like i understand that part but yeah mm. it's a little bit frustrating and so even though you have you know this kind of uh you know, challenges in your job day to day or bigger problem that you can't help everyone and so, and, and so on. Uh, how do you, you know, keep going? You said like, I wake up every day and go to work. Uh, what motivates you to keep going, even though it can be hard? Mm, I think that um, we are not uh, all the time in touch with the migrant population just when we go to visit and I'm kind of a little bit more in touch because I called to to the shelter manager and they told me about how is the context and like that um but but actually is that what motivates motivates me that that we we can uh, that we we can I can make my job better each day because it's this improvement will help. Great, thank you. This is the end uh, of the interview. Thank you, Steffi, for your time. <laughs> thank you, Ines, for this uh, interview.